Today we're going to be starting our unit on matter. And this is one of my favorite units where we look at different properties of matter, physical properties, chemical properties. We look at physical and chemical changes. We do a lot of really cool chemical reactions, and we'll get to see those a little bit later in the unit. But before we get into all of the more complicated things, it's important for us, first of all, to understand what matter is as we talk about it. Now, we know that everything in the universe is one of two things, falls under one of two categories, and those are the categories of matter or energy. And in fourth grade, we learned about energy being the ability to do work, and this year we're going to focus more on matter and what it is and some characteristics of it. An important concept to understand, though, as we talk about matter, and energy for that, is the idea of the law of conservation of matter and energy. And this is a scientific law that says that the amount of matter and energy in the universe is constant, meaning it can't change. New matter is not being created, old matter is not being destroyed. We will look in this unit about how matter can change state, it can change locations, it can change its chemical composition, but even as it goes through these changes, the amount of matter that exists will always stay constant. To give a simple definition for matter, and this is a definition I want everyone to remember, is that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And over the next few minutes, we'll be looking at what those two characteristics mean. When we talk about mass, we're just talking about the amount of matter that makes an object up. Now, on the microscopic level, every piece of matter, whether it be a grain of sand, a speck of dust, an insect, our bodies, the walls of this room around me, they're all made of tiny particles called atoms. And these atoms bond together to form molecules that make up everything around us. But the amount of atoms in an object are going to give it its mass. And we can tell how much mass an object has when we weigh it or when we pick it up. When I pick up this water bottle, I know that it has mass because I feel the weight of the bottle pushing down on my hand. And a lot of people kind of get mass and weight mixed up a little bit. They're very similar and they're definitely related, but the weight that we feel from objects is caused by gravity pulling down on the mass of an object. So it's not exactly the same thing, but it's definitely related. But the mass itself is just the amount of matter, the number of atoms, the number of molecules that are making that object up. We use a unit called grams to measure mass. And in the next video, we'll look at how we can actually do measurements of objects to determine their mass using a few different types of scales. The second characteristic that we said all matter has is that it takes up space. And another important measurement for us to be able to do is to measure the amount of space that an object does take up. And we call that measurement the volume of the object. Now, we can go back to this water bottle again, and if I look on the label here, it actually tells me the volume of the water. It says there's 500 milliliters of water in this bottle. So basically what that means is the water in that bottle takes up 500 milliliters of space. And again, in another video, we'll look at how we can actually do volume measurements for liquids and for solids. When we measure volume, we use a unit called milliliters. And again, that's off of the metric system. We have milliliters, we have liters, which one liter would be 1,000 milliliters. So we've talked about matter being anything that has mass and anything that also takes up space, but it's also important for us to understand the different states that matter can exist in. And we have what are called our three common states. You've got things like plasmas, non-Newtonian fluids that are kind of in between, but we're not going to focus on those today. We're just going to focus on the three traditional common states of matter being solids, liquids, and gases. Almost every type of matter can exist in any of these three states. The water in this bottle, again, I keep going back to that as my example, but the water in this bottle can exist in the state of a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Right now it's in the state of a liquid, but we can cause changes in state many times by just changing the temperature of an object. I could take my water bottle and set it in the freezer, lower the temperature of the object, and it would change state from being a liquid to being a solid. I could take it and put it in a pot and boil it on the stove, and it would change state again. It would change from being a liquid to being a gas. So different changes in matter like this are often caused by changes in temperature. Something that I think is very useful for keeping up with all these changes of state is this chart 
which shows how changes in temperature lead to changes of state. And we can look at it and see that as an object goes from a solid to a liquid, we call that melting. As it goes from a liquid to a gas, it's boiling. If it goes from a gas back to a liquid, it's condensing. Uh, from a liquid to a solid, it's freezing. And those are the changes that we normally see. But there's also some changes we'll look at where something might skip one of those stages. Maybe it goes directly from a solid to a gas through the process of sublimation. Maybe it goes directly from a gas to a solid through the process of deposition. And we'll look at examples of that as we do some of our activities for this unit as well.